Good morning. I would like, first of all, to thank the organizers of this third seminar in Domenici Montane, because organizing this type of event, well, any type of event these days is really difficult. So we are really thankful for that and for giving us the opportunity at Casanovas to tell you about the restoration of the cable. As you are well aware, this is a modernist building built in 1908 um, by Domenico Montanet. It's like you would go back in time when you go into this building in, filled with flourishings where you can see all the applied arts, all the stoneworks, all the woodworks, the stained glass, the mosaic, the windows, the doors, everything that so accurately was done with his collaborators, Gaspar Omar, Iris Bru, Pujol, Ivausi, and Tony Rigal would be but a few. But when the visitor comes into Casanovas, uh, other than the impressive work done by Domenico Montane, is how well preserved is. And indeed, Casanovas has one of the greatest, more imaginative um, interiors in European modernism. Uh, and it's quite um, different from what they see from the outside, but because what they see is an unfinished um, building because of precisely what happened on March the 26th, 1938. Rebuilding the memory. Reus va ser una de les ciutats catalanes més castigades durant la Guerra Civil Espanyola i la tercera més bombardejada. El 26 de març del 1938, les sirenes van alertar de nou la població i a un quart i mig de nou del matí, sis bombarders SM-79 de l'aviació italiana van sobrevolar la ciutat i van llançar 72 bombes. L'impacte d'una d'elles va provocar que la casa Navàs perdés part de la façana, la teulada, la torre que s'erigia a la cantonada de l'immoble i el frontispici. La por era constant. Aquell dia van sonar les armes de bon matí i la gent va córrer cap als refugis. Van començar a caure bombes dins del nucli antic de la ciutat. Una bomba va fer molt bé a la part de dalt de la casa de Bas i també a la casa del costat, cal per dalt, al començament del carrer Jesús. Una plaça que ja havia vist alterada completament la seva fesomia perquè de ser un espai obert s'havia convertit en un seguit de muntanyes de terra que protegia air sirens and people run into shelters. And I remember how one night there were 11 uh, warning signs. And people had to really go down their apartments and run into shelters. That was really difficult. So this is, was just an excerpt of the documentary that we produced for the reconstruction of the gable. Again, this was one heavily damaged city. One of the bombs, as you have seen, was dropped right in Casanavas. And in this reconstruction, you can see on the lower balcony, the roof, the tower and the gable wall, how affected they were. During the 40s and 60s, uh, the owners of the Casa Navas brought some major reconstruction works, but because of financial issues, they had to do away with any ornaments, any decorative elements, such as the tower and the gable wall. And as you can see on your right-hand side, this is the picture that probably most people living in Reus, most Reus residents, think about when they think about the Casa Navas. It is these towerless 
building because this is how it has become, it has been ingrained in the minds of the res residents. With the new owners, they decided they wanted to bring back the original aspect, the original look brought by Domenech in Montenet last century, which meant rebuilding the tower and the gable. It was decided to start first with the gable, and this was finally accomplished in July last year. And you could think that this was an easy thing, but it was easier said than done, of course. Uh, indeed, the work by Joan Toes and Joan Sansa as an architect, as well as Joan Arroyo as the curator and restorer, they took up on a project started by the previous owners in 2014. In 2018, it was resumed. They've been working on it for a year, and then it was... Um, brought forward to the Heritage Commission at Tarragona that it was finally approved in 2019 and that was re required because this was designated as a Catalan historic landmark and therefore we need the due approval of the Catalan government. And finally, with the approval, we started working on the house on February 2020 and on July 2020 we managed to inaugurate it. Again, these entail lots of work, lots of questions that finally the technical staff were able to sort out. And I remember how the first thing that popped up is whether it was really required to rebuild the gable or whether we had to keep it because that was also part of history. Yet, it was clear to you that it was required. Yes, th this was the original question that, and I'm here again representing a team of technical people. I was indeed the last one to join, but yet I'm here to tell you about it. But this was the original question, the, I would say, the starting question that we may, that we must face ourselves on any restoration of the heritage. And any of you working on heritage know that that requires and then working on a setting of high complexity the complexity given by the overlapping, by the even the confrontation of different values. There is the architectural value of the building, but there is the historical value of the ravages of time, the cultural values, the social value, and there is the value brought by usage. I mean, the way we use these buildings, because there is a consensus that the best way to preserve uh, heritage is by providing usage to, him, to it I, and I think that there is a consensus and there are some financial values to it or that have an impact. So there is no single answer that could be applied to all of these questions but in our view we believed it was worth restoring these cable walls on the one hand because of the will of the owners and it was a long process, we know that, but it's not technically that complex. It will be once we start working on the tower, because that will be way more complex. But anyway, we believed that the right choice was to rebuild the gable out of three main reasons. First of all, because the gable is a fundamental element in the facade of this building. This building is in the Mercadal Square, right at the center of a square town, not just the Reus, but you know, all in the county. It is a portico um, square, and Domenico Montenet, and the previous building that was replaced by the House Navas, was um, bringing this in and understanding the how the portico square was and replicating it. You can see these three floors, this ground floor with these capitals and these very unique form which bring to mind as if it, they were deformed by the weight of the building, then the first floor and then a another floor, the third floor, as if it was a sort of a closed floor, 
and as if it didn't is an attic. So three floors corresponding to its three usages, the economic activity, the house properly, the living quarters, and the attic. So it's really well structured with um, building rigor that's really high, as it must be. And this is precisely what um, made the whole ornamental work possible. Also, this central axis is really powerful, this central axis, with the gallery, with a balcony, and culminating in the gable. Without the gable, it's uh, this wheel, this axis is really damaged as a way to distinguish these versus the other houses in the square. But since uh, Casa Navas wants to be unique in comparison to the other houses, the gable is quite a fundamental element in this. And maybe later on we can speak about the tower in that there are two facades here at the square and on the Jesus Street. And the interplay between these two uh, facades uh, make up for this tower. And then that was the first reason. Secondly, it's not that the gable disappeared because of the ravages of time or because of the materials or fading out or because there are different construction techniques, but rather it's a violent disappearance. It's a violent removal. And this is something to bear in mind when considering whether to restore it or not. And the third reason that we believe is fundamental is that this is not just a made-up uh, thing. This is not just um, taking from text as if in the ancient Gavas house there was a gable wall. No, this is fully documented. There are plenty of pictures, enough pictures to really know about its size, its width, its length, and there are some fragments that were preserved by the owners in a farmhouse in the outskirts of Reus that allowed us, that enabled us to define the ornament in these panels that were not appreciated in some of the pictures. So, yes, I will continue because we do have many things to explain. So, once it was clear that we had to rebuild the gable, we had to analyze on how to do it. That's when Power Royo's team came in with the documenting the pictures and the original stonework. One of the most interesting parts was this drawing done by Domenico Montané himself, which provided many clues, of course. But as you can see, the floral ornaments are not perfectly defined, hence the significance of the craftspeople and their leeway, the leeway that they had in devising this. But that was not information enough. We required some more pictures back in the days were not that high res and therefore you cannot zoom in and to look precisely how these ornaments were. So a third crucial element in restoring this gable is the fact of the preservation of the original stones. These stones were after the bombings in the middle of the square but the owners kept these and brought these to a farmhouse in the outskirts of Reus. So we went there, we collected, we collected them all, and we found like 10 most significant stones, five of them belonging to the cornice. We are in doubt whether some of them might be part of the tower. This is something that you will have to look at later on, Juan. And five of them were indeed from the gable. And three out of these five are the most crucial ones, as you can see here in the picture, that belong to three different panels out of these five 
major panels found in the ornaments of the gable. But if you would mix these three parts, you would almost have in total one of these panels and they are all five panels are the same. So that was really quite a work that we had ad advanced. Yet it's not only these panels, we have the pinnacles, we have the corbels, we don't have as much detail yet as the ones we had obtained from this panel. From here on, Pau's team went after two solutions. On the one hand, looking for parallel ornaments in the same building that would provide some clues as to how they were. For instance, this is a window. Is it from the terrace main facade? I, I think it's from the side facade. And this enabled us to know how the pinnacles were. And then there were some things such as the central medallion where we could find no further parallel ornaments within the house. And this is how some interpretation had to be done by Pau's team based on the pictures. So this was required in order to better understand the common facade and to have a homogeneous look. And this is the final design of the gable. And from here on, yet another question, how we can sort out the historical fake, which was crucial if we wanted to rebuild the gable. And three main choices were made by the technical team here first, uh, so that you can see. First is that there was to be less depth. You can see that there is quite a depth in the original panel, whereas in the reproduction there is less of a relief. Of course, uh, the historical fake was crucial in order to get the approval by the Catalan government because we had to distinguish between the original work and the restoration. Then, the, you can see that the shapes of the stems, of the flowers, even in the ball flower uh, in centrally, which were originally perforated, whereas in our reconstruction this is not the case. It's another way of distinguishing it. And finally, the smooth surface of the element. Maybe you cannot see that in the picture well enough, but in the original elements you could see the scratching and etching of the um, of the tools done by the stonemasons in order to provide a greater effect and a greater intensity, whereas we ask our stonemasons to try and prevent the markings of tools to not be seen, and this is why some abrasive uh, chemicals were brought later on in order to leave them fully smoothed out. After these three choices, these three decisions, we got the approval by the Catalan government. And this was, was in July 2019, and we are still to see, we were still to see who were to perform the building works. So the, Recop were the ones chosen because they are in Reus and because they have been doing this type of a job for 25 years. But we still had to find the, a team of stonemasons, which is not that easy, because finding craftspeople like that uh, is not that easy as it was in back in modernist times. We got the recommendation of this workshop of Pero Matias, and we are really proud on how they have worked. Indeed, watching them do their craft it was really impressive. We decided to use natural stone from Vinasha because you know that Vinasha, that's a sandstone which can be more easily worked upon. At first, stonemasons decided to come up with a mold of one of the central panels, yet after the first panel, they were not happy enough and they decided to go hand by hand, stone by stone, just like they did 100 years ago, uh, the Domenico Montaigne collaborators. And this is the result, which in our view is really impressive. This is how they assembled it at uh, the workshop. And finally, in late May, it was moved to the Casanova's house. Before the gable was built upon, and the technical team had already started the works at Casanovas, 
for the previous setup in order to assemble the cable. So let's see in the next slide, just quickly, a couple of things here. The roof, when recovered, was not used with the initial slope. And you can see on the left hand side that was the original slope where the cornice would act as a drain pipe for the collection of rainwater. You can see during the Civil War there is not that much of a slope and there is a back pipe creating this ledge. But that was not part of the original design so what we did was not of course rebuilding the roof but we tried to remove as much this ledge and recover it, this drain pipe and uh, it was used it was recovered uh, with a zinc sheet to prevent any leaking in the different elements at the cornice that was one spot recovering the pitched roof that's behind the cable. We've, we don't have any files here, any documents, but there were some remains in some other areas. Uh, so this is a pattern that we, this triangular pattern that we're, we were able to tap upon and to see how the new roof on the back could be replicated with glazed ceramics, with handmade ceramics. And this is the strengthening, the reinforcement that was not there at first. The ashlars that were stable, uh, they are stable on their own. But we thought it was more cautious to, of course, look into the building code, uh, the building techniques, which would say that this was not to stand. So we built a steel reinforcement, which is not active, even though it stands on its own, it would be placed un uh, under loading, under weight-bearing condition, if there were thrusts, if there were horizontal thrusts, and that would be the instance when that would work, this is steel reinforcement. The steel reinforcement allowed for some minor change, because at first we were to link the ashlars between themselves with some beams, with some bars, and that was not finally done, because as you can see on the, your right-hand side, based on this reinforcement, we came up with some sort of a grid that would enable us to have these ashlars standing without the need to assemble any inner bars. And this is a short clip on how we started off the works. First roof tile removed. And while they were working on the stones at Petros Matias, the setup was done with the roof, with the reinforced structure. There were some uh, facade, facade works, and uh, given that there was a scaffolding, but yes, maybe you can tell us about how you rose the stones. Yes, the, we pre-assembled these on the workshop in order to guarantee that we're working fine. And maybe this is probably one of the most spectacular clips. They each, each of these panels weighed like about a ton. And that was uh, a celebration day for the whole town. As I was telling you before, by not using any bars, the assembly was really made easier because they are resting on a mortar bed. But yes, I remember how it was clear to you, but then I, I, my heart was really pounding because 
Oh, that was something to behold, really. So it was finally fitted and we could inaugurate the cable. Again, we do have the documentary film. Uh, you can see that in our website. Once that was done, it was sleep with a patina, uh, with a historical fake, as we were telling, so that the whole set was to be understood harmoniously, but it was to be self-evident in that you were to distinguish what was new from what was old. And then this is the result of this cable wall. It was inaugurated on July the 9th, 2020. We wanted to have a major inauguration, but then you know the times we live in, this pandemic prevented us from having any public event. We wanted to have an inauguration, but out of the health conditions, we reached the conclusion that it was better to have an online inauguration there was uh, um, it was covered covered and it was broadcasted live on the local tv we at first brought the the documentary uh, this short documentary done by acid factory rose broadcasting company and then we fully broadcasted the removal of the cover to fully see the cable. There were some um, parallel events with some conferences done on how we had reached that spot, the bombings in the, during the Spanish Civil War, and then the lead architects told about how the whole reconstruction had been done. Once more, we have really enjoyed working so close with this type of a project in the time so important for with a building so important for not only Rose but with European modernism. Now the question is when will the tower be rebuilt? When will it be? Well, what we'll see? We'll see. We're working on that. But as Joan was saying, this is way more complex and so it requires for a, a thorough review and we do have the will to move along this path, even though it is up to the Catalan government to approve, but that will be yet the next chapter. That's it. Thank you very much.